good morning, church family. It's different this morning just being virtual with you this morning. But we're still going to praise the Lord because He's a God who saves and He is the joy of the world. So let's lift Him high as we sing to the Father. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grave. We lift him up because he is our Father. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that our God saves, our God saves. There is hope in your name. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that. saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that yes the world will see
Good morning again, church family. Thank you so much for joining with us online this morning. I uh, pray that all are well, and I want to ask you to continue to pray for the rest of our church family. Of course, one of the reasons, the main reason we did this today is because of many dealing with COVID and other illnesses this week. So just continue to be in prayer uh, for all of our church family, and thank you for bearing with us. We hope this is the only time we do this, but of course, we will keep you updated on how things go this week. But again, thank you all, no matter where you're at, for joining with us today. Uh, just I normally wouldn't do announcements at this time, but I do want to bring a couple of things to your attention. First of all, I um, do want to let you know, as you saw on Facebook, hopefully next week, our goal is to have uh, our big business meeting looking at the budget for 2021. Uh, with that in mind, assuming that goes forward, if you want to get a copy of that proposed budget, do remind you, you can come pick that up at the office this week. Also, with Christmas, we just sang our first Christmas carol of the year, but as that is approaching, of course, this is the annual time we do our angel tree ministry in conjunction with our van ministry, community ministry. So we still have about 20 kids, I believe, that need to be sponsored. Doing it a little different this year. The, the details are there in our Facebook group. Look at Ms. Lori Johnson's post about that. Um, but we ask you, we encourage you to take part in that ministry. Let's cover all of those children uh, and do what we can to make their Christmas a little better. Uh, but there's information, again, on the church Facebook group. And also, of course, you can contact the church office or Ms. Lori Johnson to find out information about that. Now, normally at this time, we would worship through the bringing of tithes and offerings. We can't do that here, but just do want to remind you, you can do that online at NBCPedal.com. So you take advantage of that sometime today or this week. But for now, let's just pray for all the rest of our services. Let's pray together for each other. So join me wherever you are. Let's pray together. Lord, we do thank you for this day. It's different. It is nasty outside. There's nobody in this room hardly. Uh, our church family is all over the place. But that's okay because you're still God and you're still good and you're still in control. So we thank you for that and we praise you for that, Lord. And we trust in you. Lord, we, we trust that no matter what has happened this past week, no matter what's going to happen this week, Lord, we trust in you and we believe in you, Lord. So wherever people are, I, I pray uh, for them. I pray that they would trust in you, that they truly would believe that, that you were in control. No matter how desperate things get, that they would remember, they would believe that you are still God, you are still good, and you are in control. So God, we lift up all of our church family who's struggling right now with COVID or other illnesses, Lord. We pray for your healing hand upon them. We pray that it would not be difficult for them, that you would just relieve any of the difficult symptoms, all of the difficult symptoms, Lord, so that they could be back on their feet doing what you've called them to do, Lord. We do ask for protection for the rest of our church family who have not gotten it or don't have it currently, Lord, that you would shield them from it as well. God, as, as weeks and days are uncertain, we pray for your wisdom guiding us. We pray that we are listening to you and following you in obedience and trust. So, Lord, we now lift up these songs. We lift up the message later on coming from Brother Shane that it would all be about you, it would be for you, it would glorify you, and it would change us. We love you, Lord. Thank you for being God over all things. It's in the name of Jesus we pray these things. Amen. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart. breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. And great are you, Lord. You give life. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord, it's your
hearts will cry, these bones will sing, great. your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord all the earth oh all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing just for us and go forgive us of seeking your hand and not your face come and empty us father we're desperate in this place and holy spirit fill us with your fire give us your desires hold us close to you and holy spirit us revelation, a healing visitation, nothing else will do. We want more and more and more and more of you. And you have given us so much more than we deserve. You deliver us by the power of your word. mercy, oh the blood that makes a spotless bride, and oh the love that covers us, oh the Savior's mercy, oh the blood that makes a spotless bride. your fire, give us your desires, hold 
hold us close to you. And Holy Spirit, give us revelation, a healing visitation, nothing else will do. Holy Spirit, fill us with your fire, give us your desire. that is our prayer this morning that you Holy Spirit would fill us fill us with your fire Lord let your presence indwell us this morning inhabit the praise of your people Lord have your way in us change us transform us those who may be listening this morning who have not been redeemed Lord we pray for their redemption we pray that the Holy Spirit would fall on each and every one. That the Holy Spirit would fill each and every home. Lord, wherever people are listening this morning, may your presence be mighty. Lord, we desperately need a holy visitation. Lord, we need your healing grace and mercy. We need a touch from you this morning. And so we ask, Lord, we seek, we pray for your filling, your indwelling, your power, that you might have your way, O oh God, with us, so that we might be the witnesses that you have called us to be. Lord, all to you, all to you we give ourselves this morning. We love you, we praise you, we worship you. We seek your filling. Fill us, O oh Lord with your Holy Spirit as we worship and praise in Jesus name Amen well if you've been walking with us over the last few months then you already know that we're in Ephesians chapter 5 this morning continuing our series on being united as one in Christ the Lord has called us to walk together as a body of believers as a congregation in Jesus Christ. And so Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 18, and that's exactly what we're going to look at this morning, what we've been singing about, being filled with the Holy Spirit. But before we get to that text, I want to share a passage with you that absolutely terrified me when I was young. When I was younger and growing up in church and hearing the preaching of God's Word and reading the Bible, this passage scared me to the core of my being. And it's 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, beginning in verse 3. Now I've shared uh, with you on the PowerPoint verse 4, but I want to read in context verses 3 through 6. And these, this, this passage is one of the passages that kept me up at night, that, that horrified me, that terrified me. There John writes, By this we know that we have come to know Him, if we keep His commandments. The one who says, I have come to know Him and does not keep His commandments is a liar and the truth is not in Him. But whoever keeps His word, in Him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in Him. The one who says He abides in Him ought Himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. I want you to know that this passage terrified me because I couldn't figure out how to live this way. I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't come to any conclusion as to how I might walk in this way. I knew the Lord's commandments, but I found myself constantly breaking His commandments. And I tried and tried. I tried to be good. I, I tried to live in righteousness. I, I kept falling short. I could not accomplish what the text commanded. No matter how hard I tried, I just could not walk in the same manner that Jesus walked. 
Now, at that time, I thought that I was the problem. I knew the commands of the Lord, and, and I came to believe that I just wasn't good enough to be a true Christian. I just didn't have what it takes. And so I gave up. Many uh, of our church family who know my testimony know that I, I simply walked away from church. I walked away from God because I could not keep the commandments. It wasn't because I didn't believe in the God of the Bible. It's not because I rejected these things. I, I just found them to be an impossibility. But years later, I discovered that my theology was the problem. I grew up in a church that has what I call spinning top theology. Uh, that God created the earth, He created the heavens and the earth, the, the universe and all that there is. And, and as though it were a, a top, He put it in motion. And, he, and that top is spinning on, on a table, so to speak. And, and God is hands off. He, he, he sent His commands, He gave His commands, and then He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, and we have the commands of Christ, but we have no, we have no assistance, we have no help in keeping those commandments. And one day, that top is going to fall off the table, and God's going to catch it, and He's going to judge the quick and the dead according to their deeds. And everyone who did not keep the commands of Christ will be judged. Well, my conviction, my belief was that no one could do what God's Word was calling us to do. You see, that same religion in which I grew up in did not understand nor did they teach grace. They taught condemnation. They taught judgment. But they did not teach grace. And so all of this was an impossibility to me. I, I could not live in righteous obedience to Christ's commands in my own strength and in my own will. I needed a helper. I needed a comforter. I needed an indwelling holy presence in order to help me keep His commands. Just as I could not save myself, only Jesus could save me, I also could not keep my salvation. I needed someone to help me do that. Someone who would keep me. But the Holy Spirit, you see, has indwelled me. He has filled me. He has sealed me. And He keeps me. That which I've entrusted to Him, He keeps against that day. Now some of you struggled with a command that we preached last week to be imitators of God as beloved children in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. That's a tall order. How, how on earth are we to be imitators of God? How on earth are we to, to, to follow God in His love, in His purity, in His light, and in His wisdom in those passages that we looked at, verses 1 through 17 last week? How is it that we can do these things? Paul gives us the answer here in verse 18 of Ephesians chapter 5, and he does it with two commands. Two commands. He says, do not get drunk. And be filled with the Spirit. Two commands. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. I want to look at that first command. Do not get drunk with wine. It is neither the Lord's will. Uh, it is never the Lord's will. It is never the Lord's will for a Christian to be drunk. Or under the influence of anything that causes them to lose control of themselves. Any substance that would cause you to lose your faculties, to lose control of, of your uh, attention, to lose control of your intent, to lose control uh, of your actions is outside the realm of God's will. This is a sin that leads to dissip dissipation, debauchery, and reckless living. Uh, you need to understand that alcohol is a thief. It, it steals your money. Your time, your good judgment, and your memory. It, it takes away your inhibitions, your reaction time, and your balance. It, it's robbed many people of their friends, of their family, of their jobs, even their lives. It, you would be blessed. You would do well just to leave it alone altogether. But certainly you do not need to give yourself to it or take partake of it in such a way that it causes you to lose control of yourself. 
Now, some would suggest that drunkenness was a major problem in Ephesus, and therefore Paul is addressing it here in the letter. But most likely, believers already knew that this was not something that they should be a part of, that that drunkenness was not something that was part of the new life in Jesus Christ, that that was something that belonged to the old life, the old sinful life. And so they had already put these things away uh, because such wasteful and degrading practices were part of the the old life, the old way, were not part of the new life in Christ. They were being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, according to chapter 4 and verse 22. But really, the issue here was not alcohol. That's not what Paul's driving at. That's not his main concern. His primary concern is what, or rather, who would be in control of our lives. And that brings us to the second command. The the emphasis here is not on not being drunk with wine. Uh, The emphasis is on being filled with the Holy Spirit. But to be filled with the Holy Spirit means to be controlled by the Spirit. Don't be controlled by drugs or alcohol or medication or any other thing. Don't be controlled by another person, but rather be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is, be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Notice it doesn't say drunk in the Spirit. It doesn't say uh, do not be drunk with wine, but instead be drunk in the Holy Spirit. There are some who have translated or interpreted it this way, and they've done so wrongly. Being filled with the Spirit does not mean some type of spiritual intoxication that makes us lose control. In fact, it's quite the opposite. If we look at the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, we see that self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. And so this is not talking about uh, being intoxicated on the Holy Spirit so much so that you're staggering around and, and claiming to be drunken by the Spirit. That's not what he's saying. He's saying be controlled by the Holy Spirit which is a part of the fruit of the Spirit, is then self-control. But when that self-control is guided by the Holy Spirit, when we're filled by the Holy Spirit, then we're able to walk in the way that God has commanded us to walk. We are able to be imitators of God. We are able to be followers of God in, in, in all of those areas that we've previously mentioned. His love, His purity, His light, and His wisdom. So to understand the meaning of this phrase, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you need a short lesson in Greek. In our English, be filled is one word in the Greek. It is pleruste. And I need you to just understand that it's in the imperative mood, the plural number, the present tense, and the passive voice. And you say, well, I wasn't interested in getting a Greek lesson this morning, Brother Shane, but thank you very much. I don't know how I'll apply that. Well, we apply it by understanding what all that means. Imperative means it's a command. So the filling of the Spirit is commanded. It's not optional. It's not something that's just for a few individuals. It's not something that's just for one denomination and not another denomination. Believers in Christ are commanded to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is a command. And in plural, it means for all believers. It's for all of us. And then it's to be experienced continually. That's the present tense. That it's not something that happened in the past. We don't say, well, I was filled, but I'm no longer filled. I'm being filled. You see, it's a continuous process there in the present tense. And it's in the passive voice, which means God is the one who's doing the filling. I can't fill myself. God fills me and He is filling me because I am His child. I am His Son. And so He is constantly, continuously filling me. And, and really, what, what Paul is saying here is don't be controlled by anything sinful. Instead, keep on being controlled by the Spirit with which the Lord has been filling you all for His glory. Since you became a believer in Jesus Christ, He began to fill you then, and, and He's saying, don't get drunk with wine. That leads to dissipation. That leads to debauchery. That de- leads to reckless living. Don't give yourself, don't give away your control to any other thing, any other substance, any other person, but instead keep on being filled by the Holy Spirit so that you might walk in righteousness, so that you might walk in His love, in His purity, in His light, and in His wisdom. 
The question is, are you being constantly filled by the Holy Spirit and therefore led by Him? Who's in control of your life this morning? I, I, I think you, you can help understand, will help you understand what it looks like to be filled with a Spirit when we see the evidence of a Spirit-filled life. First of all, there is unity in fellowship. Unity in fellowship. Look there in verse 19. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Again, it's evident that Paul is writing to congregations, people, believers who are congregating together. I know it's awkward to, to, to mention that this morning as we're in a virtual service. But that's who he's writing to is those who are congregating together. So in a virtual sense, in an online sense, uh, through, through the miracle of technology, we're congregating, we're fellowshipping together with one another this morning for the purpose of corporate worship, encouragement, and training in righteousness along with spiritual accountability. That's who he's writing to. He's not writing to individuals. He's not writing to lone believers who are scattered about uh, the Roman Empire. He's writing to congregations, churches that are assembling together, worshiping together there uh, in the region of Ephesus. And in this fellowship, they were to speak to one another. Speak to one another in ways that edify each other and glorify the Lord. In other words, not in terms of personal desire or agenda, but in terms of teaching and spiritual proclamation that builds unity in the body of Christ. I, I love this text because what we find here, and also in Colossians 3.16, where he reiterates this, we find a description of biblical worship. I need you to see something in the text, that biblical worship is balanced worship. When it comes to how we speak to one another in the singing of uh, praise to the Lord, then that there is a balance that is here. He says psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. The psalms, of course, are the Old Testament Psalter, the book of psalms. That the, the nation of Israel, that the Hebrews had sung to one another, uh, to spoke to one another and to glorify God, but also to strengthen one another, encourage one another, lift one another up throughout the centuries. And then there are hymns. W what is a hymn? A, a hymn belongs in a hymnal, right? <laughs> really, when the text speaks of a hymn, it's talking about a, a composed song that exalts Christ. Uh, that, that's really the implication uh, of the word here. In, in Paul's writing. And then spiritual songs. Spiritual songs, maybe he used this term to differentiate them from secular songs, but this probably referred to spontaneous singing of praise. Uh, that, that someone came and, and they just, they had a song, they had a chorus of joy that they sung, and many of those choruses later became hymns because they were composed and then they began to be shared uh, around in other churches and, and throughout the Christian community. And we see many of these hymns recorded in the New Testament. In fact, there was one back in verse 14 that we mentioned last week. Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And so we see this balance of worship. This being offered. And, and still, uh, there's a, a struggle in our churches today. What, how are we going to speak to one another? How, how are we going to come together and praise the Lord? Well, still, so many people come with personal preferences and personal desires. And, and, and they, they want to say that we need to speak to one another with only this form or this style of worship. And I love that here in Scripture we have a balance. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That's what we strive for here at Macedonia Baptist Church is to, to praise the Lord in a biblical way, a balanced way. It may not be the way that you were accustomed to. It may not be the way that you did when, when you were young, but it is a biblical way. And, and that's our desire. That's what we're always seeking to do here. So the question is, are you speaking spirit-filled words of unity? Because that's what he's driving at. That we would be united in this. You know, that's one of the things that unites us is when, we, when we're able to come together, assemble together, and sing. Singing is one of the areas that's, that's the least spectator-involved thing that we do at church. Much of, many of the things that we do are, are you simply watching or listening, but singing gives you an opportunity to speak to one another that you speak to those around you, that you speak to those who, who are in the proximity of hearing your voice. And as we 
glorify the Lord, as we praise Him, as we lift Him up, it unifies us in fellowship. Singing is vital to the body of Christ because it unites us not only in theology, but it unites us in praise, it unites us in joy, it unites us in worship of the Lord. And we speak to one another. And so uh, unity in fellowship is certainly an evidence of the Spirit-filled life, but so is joyous praise. The second part of verse 19. Then he says, singing. Speaking at first uh, in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, but singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Joyous praise. Now this is not really a different response than speaking, but it's the same response from a different perspective. When we praise God together, we're instructing one another. We're speaking to one another. But you cannot fulfill the teaching of this verse apart from the fellowship of the church. I think we need to be thankful for church online, that we need to be thankful for the technology that we have to be able to do this today, but do not be content with it. Do not be satisfied with virtual church. Do not be satisfied with online church because you cannot fellowship adequately in this way. I'm thankful that we have this opportunity and I'm thankful that we'll continue to do it afterwards, even after COVID-19 is eradicated, even after it is, it is gone. We'll continue to offer this for those who have a need, but please don't ever be content with church this way. Don't opt for forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. It's necessary at this time, but it will not always be necessary. So do not be content with this, because this cannot replace the physical gathering of God's family for worship. But this joyous praise is not confined to corporate worship. In fact, the the singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord implies a life lived out as a symphony of praise before the Lord. So this is not just talking about corporate worship, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, some, like me, have always said, I'm so thankful that it says making a melody in your heart because I can't make a melody with my voice. It's not possible. Even being filled with the Holy Spirit, I have not been given the gift of singing. I've not been given the gift of being able to carry a tune. So I'm very thankful that it says making a melody in my heart, but it goes beyond singing. This is offering ourselves to the Lord. So let me ask you, this morning, what does the melody in your heart sound like? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Is He controlling you? Is He guiding you? Is He leading you in all righteousness so that you are imitating God in His love, in His purity, in His light, and in His wisdom? Is your heart this morning in harmony with the Lord as you are being filled with the Spirit? Are you making a melody in your heart to the Lord? The filling of the Holy Spirit brings unity and fellowship. It prompts joyous praise and continuous thanksgiving. There in verse 20, he says, Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. The fullness of the Spirit calls us to a radical, form of spiritual gratitude because it says always in all things are you able to give thanks to the Lord are you able to walk in thanksgiving before God always in all things I know we just celebrated Thanksgiving this past Thursday and It was probably different than some of the thanksgivings that you've experienced in the past. And some of you are isolated and some of you are quarantined. And some of you were not able to enjoy the the festival, the festivities as usual. Were you thankful in the midst of that? Were you thankful for God's goodness? Were you thankful for God's salvation? Were you thankful for God's provision? Are we thankful always in all things? Centuries ago, in the 1300s, the German priest Johann Thaler spoke to a beggar that he met on the street by saying, 
God give you a good day, my friend. The beggar replied, I thank God I have never had a bad one. Surprised, Tyler said, God give you a happy life, my friend. To which the beggar answered, I thank God I am never unhappy. In amazement, the priest asked, what do you mean? The beggar said, well, when it is fine, I thank God. And when it rains, I thank God. When I have plenty, I thank God. And when I am hungry, I thank God. Why should I say I am unhappy when I am not? Do we have that attitude of thanksgiving? That in every circumstance, in every situation, at all times and all ways, that we are thankful. That we would be able to say, as a beggar in the 1300s, I can only imagine how destitute he was. I can only imagine what his homeless situation and circumstance was like. But to be able to say, no matter what happens, no matter what my circumstances, no matter what my situation, I've never had a bad day, and I am always happy. That is walking in genuine and true thanksgiving. That is a sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. To be thankful, whatever our circumstances are. You know, it's sad that as Americans we have so much, but yet we are among the least grateful, the least gracious of all the earth's inhabitants because we want more. We, we sung earlier, Lord, we want more and more and more of you. But tragically, the anthem of our nation is the pursuit of happiness, meaning we want more and we want more and we want more stuff and things, and possessions, and money, and comfort, and fame, and popularity. We want more and more and more of what this world has to offer, rather than wanting more and more and more of the filling presence of the Holy Spirit of God. And tragically, many of us are not truly even thankful for what we do have, because we want more. But we want more of the wrong things. More of those things that are not good for us, those things that are not healthy for us, those things that do not build us up. But instead, they are debauchery, dissipation, reckless living. Those who are filled with the Spirit, you see, have no room for grumbling, have no room for complaining, have no room for negativity. Are you thankful for everything? If you are filled with the Spirit this morning, then you are walking in the unity of fellowship. You are walking in joyous praise. You are walking in thanksgiving before the Lord. Are you under the influence of the Holy Spirit today? Are you under the influence of another spirit? Are you under the influence of another substance? Are you under the influence of another person? Something or someone other than the Holy Spirit of God. What Paul says to us in this text is do not be filled, do not be drunken with wine, because that leads to dissipation, that leads to reckless living, it leads to sin. But be filled. That is, be under the influence of the Holy Spirit of God. Are you under the influence of the Holy Spirit this morning? Is there evidence of His filling in your life as you walk in the unity of the fellowship, joyous praise and thanksgiving? Or are you ready to be filled? My prayer for you this morning is that you would know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And that in coming to know Him and confessing your sins before Him, and knowing Him as Lord and Savior, then you would be filled with His Holy Spirit. Not just one time, but every day for the rest of your life, that you would be walking in that filling. And so my invitation to you this morning is to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that you might walk in, its, in His evidence, you might walk in His grace, in His mercy, 
that you might be comforted, that you might be strengthened, that you might be kept, and that the one who is able to keep you will keep you against that day of judgment. That's my prayer for you. Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy. And we ask now, Lord, that you would continue to fill us with your Holy Spirit. That we might be controlled by you. That you would be the one who influences us in all things. And that no substance, no possession, nothing of this earth, Lord God, would be in control of our lives. No one, no thing, but you and you alone. We ask that you would have your way in us. Lord, please fill us with your spirit this morning. As we give you the praise and the glory and the adoration. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you.